Hey, what up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you. I don't think I did any WCW reviews uh, last week. I think I've been out for a week, but I've still been watching the product. I've still been watching WCW Nitro. I've still been watching... Um, uh, well, I haven't got to another pay-per-view yet. I was able to watch Fall Brawl 95, uh, I think that was last week, because it was a part of the thing. I'm just sort of watching Nitro, 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 and then the pay-per-view comes along, pay-per-view, and it, it's actually making it pretty fun to follow along with the shows. Nitro was really awesome, because at the beginning, it was only one-hour show. Uh, this episode came with a double main event, Randy Savage against Kevin Sullivan, as well as Lex Luger against Ming. Uh, this was a pretty good episode of Nitro. I mean, it was it's better than Raw's been uh, putting out uh, as of late on TV. Uh, I wouldn't go far to, to say that it's like the most exciting thing that I've been watching. Of course, Night of Champions on Sunday was an awesome pay-per-view. Uh, but when it comes down to it, I, I really enjoy watching these. Um, I don't know when Nitro turned into a two-hour show. I, I might be dreading those a little bit because, honestly, you can watch an hour of Nitro in about 45 minutes with no commercials, and it's over before you really know what happened. Uh, the show opens Alex Wright against Disco Inferno. I know that uh, when, when most people look back at WCW and they think about Alex Wright, uh, he was the guy that was supposed to become a big star that never really turned out. Disco Inferno was the guy that was there. Uh, pretty much from, from the day Nitro uh, started to the last Nitro uh, that aired. Um, but uh, most most people think of these guys as just dancing fools. Uh, nothing really came of their gimmick. They, you know, I'm sure these guys won the television championship a few times. If they won anything higher than that, I'm not really sure. But um, these guys really could wrestle. And this match, uh, th this match um, really, really... Um, you know, proves its point. Alex Wright and Disco Inferno was an awesome match. I won't uh, go as far. Maybe I will. I think this was the best wrestling match of the night. It ended um, uh, when Alex Wright counters a swinging neckbreaker into a backslide, uh, and he rolls him up for the one, two, three. I honestly thought this was a really good match. Um, you know, Disco Inferno on, on a few of these shows has just sort of used this comic relief where he just comes out and uh, holds up signs uh, on the stage uh, during, uh, you know, introductions. You can tell that they're really trying to get you to hate this guy because of the Disco gimmick. But I think over time, I think people really grew to love Disco Inferno. He, he became one of those sort of heel baby faces that everybody loved. Um, you know, from, we go from here, we go to a pre-taped interview uh, with Hulk Hogan uh, talking about uh, the Dungeon of Doom, and he just is so distraught over getting his neck broken, uh, but he mostly wants to talk about, you know, this giant cross the line when he ran uh, the the uh, Harley Davidson over with the monster truck. So, at Halloween Havoc, Hulk Hogan is challenging the giant to a monster truck challenge match, where he's going to go out to the makers of Bigfoot and have them create him a Hulkamania Bigfoot truck. And he's going to take it to Halloween Havoc, and he's going to have a monster truck challenge against the Giant. For me, I know that there's a match at Halloween Havoc, but if this is just me, I'm thinking that WCW is building up its main event for the Halloween Havoc pay-per-view as two wrestlers driving around in monster trucks trying to find out that there's a winner. Trying to see that they're going to build this pay-per-view around the Monster Truck Challenge. I have no clue how this is going to pay off for them. But basically, that's the whole Kogan gimmick. Uh, from there we go uh, to Gene Oakland having a, a, a summit in the ring uh, with Lex Luger and Randy Savage. Lex Luger says that he just wants respect from Randy Savage. And that basically, he challenges him to a match next week. And that if Lex Luger is not able to beat Randy Savage next week. He will leave WCW once again, and Savage will become the number one contender to get a WCW world title shot. So they leave you from there. From there we go to a match with Kurosawa going up against Sergeant uh, Craig Pittman. Uh, in this match, uh, Kurosawa was able to get the match. These are two guys that you can also tell WCW is really trying to push. We've seen these guys a few times on the early Nitro shows, and you know, with the show only being an hour, there's only a few matches. So, for people to get repeat uh, matches with such a big roster uh, in um, WCW, you can tell that, that they're trying to make something. But Sergeant Craig Pittman takes the loss. 
uh, which really does surprise me because it seemed like he was getting the Goldberg push at the time. And I don't even know who this Kurosawa guy is or where he goes from. Pretty, I, pretty soon, I'm, I'm going to guess that they just give up on the guy. Um, you know, then, then we go to Arn Anderson and Brian Pillman having a uh, an interview in the ring, talking about Ric Flair and challenging him to a tag team match and basically saying that there's nobody who's going to tag with Ric Flair. Ric Flair was a, a bad guy for too long and no one's going to trust him. And uh, they keep mentioning the name Sting, so I'm guessing this is going to lead to a match of Sting and Ric Flair against uh, Brian Pillman and Arn Anderson, even though they bring up the fact that Ric Flair beat up Sting's dad, Ric Flair tried to break Sting's back. There's too much history there, but they just kept mentioning his name over and over again to the point where you know what's going to happen. Uh, we go to a match of Randy Savage against Kevin Sullivan. Uh, this is payback for the... Uh, they showed a clip of Randy Savage working out on the set of Baywatch with him lifting weights when Kevin Sullivan in full-on Baywatch attire jumped Randy Savage and tried to choke him out with the weightlifting bar uh, and started so throwing sand in his eyes. Of course, so that would bring you down to a match. Uh, the match is going on, and as the match is going, uh, it gets thrown out uh, due to a, a DDT uh, when basically the giant comes down and just basically beats up Randy Savage and leaves him laying in the ring. Uh, two jobbers of WCW uh, that I do not know who they are come down to try and make a difference. Only to be met by a, a choke slam and then another choke slam. Alex Wright comes down, uh, tries to do like a flying cross body off the top rope. He's met by the giant who catches him and choke slams him. Uh, later, uh, you know, Lex Luger comes running down to the ring. Uh, as he runs down to the ring to save Randy Savage, he runs up on Randy Savage's body and sort of just looks at it. He looks at it almost like the heel turn that we've been thinking we were getting. Uh, was Lex Luger finally going to join the Dungeon of Doom? Instead, he tries to make some sort of an attempt to go after the giant, but the giant choke slams him. The giant leaves everybody laying there in the center of the ring. Uh, we go to commercial. As we come back from commercial, everyone has left the ring except Lex Luger, who's still laying there in the ring as the Meng's music comes down and we're basically setting up to have a Meng versus Lex Luger match. I'm guessing that there's no way in the world they're going to give the Dungeon of the Dude the total squash in this, but basically during this match, which is very short, Meng pulls out his golden spike, he stabs Lex Luger right into the throat, gets the 1 2 3 in the Dungeon of Doom, walks out with a win. Well, he didn't really win. They get the, the, the they got the um they got they, they got the, they got a moral victory, I guess you can say. Savage won by DQ, but they you know, they laid Savage out. They get a 1 2 3 over Lex Luger. Uh basically all that's setting up is that uh, you know, at uh, Halloween Havoc WCW uh, is going to send out their Hulk Hogan, and uh, basically the Giant needs to get that one, and they get the clean sweep over everybody. Mm -hmm. Hype up the fact that Hulk Hogan can't stand the fact that he's seen WCW laid out. Uh, he saw, you know, basically the, sh the Giant give choke slams to Alex Wright, Macho Man, Lex Luger, and some jobbers. He's saying that next week they're going to be in Denver, and he's going to challenge the Giant face-to-face -to, -face to see what happens. They're building up to a big show from Denver the next week. It's supposed to be some sort of a super show. I believe this is the show that, that Chris Benoit debuts on. And um, uh, they're going to have a match with the uh, the American Males going up against the Nasty Boys on the next show. Plus you have the main event of Randy Savage versus Lex Luger in the career versus... Or the, I guess it's the career and the number one contender match. Macho Man's not putting up his career on the line, but Lex Luger is. So that's the next one. This was a good one. Can't wait for the next one. Peace out.